Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today we've got Bonnie Genevieve with us, and she's going to help us take a look at the A7R4 and the Canon R5. Too much conversation about the video on the, a, uh, the R5. I think Canon blew it. They yeah. should have They should have been talking about how amazing this is for stills. I mean, 45 megapixels, nothing to sneeze at. It shoots 12 frames per second. It has over 1,000 autofocus points. It it's shoots amazing. 12 frames a second. It's up to 180 frames. Yeah, I mean, it, in RAW. It, it, really, in RAW. That's an incredible camera. It is a 45 megapixel camera versus a 61 megapixel camera, effectively. So the R4 is, is a, it's a much larger file. It's a very be beautiful image. I've shot on this camera several times. I think it's an excellent image. I want to look at the autofocus. I want to look at the picture quality. I just want to see how these compare to each other as still cameras. Forget about overheating and all that kind of baloney. Let's just, because they don't have problems when it comes to being still cameras. These two cameras are great cameras to look at and with regards to that. All right, let's look at picture quality. Let's look at autofocus and let's get it done. So we're going to do an image quality test in a lighting situation that's my absolute favorite. I love it when you have a backlight situation, so you're looking into the shadows of the background. But you get a nice rim light on her hair, and then we're going to put a little LED light up in on her face, which looks really nice. So let's shoot away and just see how these cameras compare. What picture looks better? Okay, we're back in the studio, and I'm going to break out my Sony from my 13096 Sony cutout case by SKD. These are awesome cases. It comes with a cutout, so you can put a Sony away in there with a lens. This is either the A7S uh, III, or you can do the A7 IV, A7R4, which we're doing here today. So you just got a nice cutout in there. You got room for a couple of other lenses. Got my sound module here, and some batteries. You, so, you love cases, I don't do. you? I <laughs> do. It's like when you're a hoarder like me, you have to have cases, cases to your put best everything friends. in. Absolutely. <laughs> So I do love these. This is a great, so a little one, one camera kit there from SKB, and you can see the number below. So let's talk about our, our test. Let's see what we got. Let's take a look at our picture quality test. Can you guess which is which? Whoa, good question. Yes, I can. Yeah. One on the left is Canon, one on the right is Sony. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I can just tell. The color is always a little warmer with Canon, mm -hmm. and Sony is always a little more muted. The mm -hmm. color is a little more muted. Look at her green yeah. uh, blouse, and look yeah. at her... And her skin. And her skin color. I mean, it's just very, very obvious. Look at the reds in the, in, on that flower in the back. It is interesting, though. I feel like the red pops just as much. So it's just like there are certain tones that are more muted and certain yeah, tones so, that pop more. Well, you know, that's true because look at the, the greens, greens in the yeah. background are popping on the Sony more than they are on the yeah. Canon. The Canons are yellow. more yellowish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the green of her shirt feels a little more vibrant to me in the Canon versus the Sony. The, this is probably the most similar I've seen a Canon and a Sony look. I didn't do a ton of adjusting. I will say the Sony was underexposed by about half stop. Yeah, which we've always found. That Sony always, always comes in under, so. But as soon as I pushed that Sony up, they started to look very close to one another. Yeah. But you can still see a difference there. How sharp are they? What's the sharpness like? Oh, super sharp. I mean, you can just go in and in <laughs> and in. Oh my. And see every pore. Every pore, every problem. <laughs> A model's nightmare. <laughs> I know. Uh, the Sony lens is a little bit softer than the RF lens. You can kind of see it in her eyelashes. My word. Looking at the picture quality of these two, I mean, they're pretty darn similar. They're both really nice. Yep. So we're going to do a quick autofocus test. She's going to start way back there and just walk straight towards camera into a close-up. Uh, it's not the most pressure test, but it works pretty well for what we need it for. The differences between these two cameras are not insignificant. The Canon has over a thousand phase detect autofocus points. The Sony still only has, I think, 490. So it's double for the Canon. We'll see if that comes into play. When she walks behind the tree, we'll go to the tree for a second. And then the question is, how long does it take to pick her up again? Yeah. And we found that with the Canon, it picked her up pretty quick after that. It wasn't like right away, but as soon as she kind of stepped forward past the tree, it snapped back to her. You could see the tree in focus and then it kind of comes back to her. Yeah. And there was pretty quick though. A couple photos in between where she was a little soft. Yeah. With the Sony, it was kind of the same thing. I feel like the Sony took a little bit longer to get to her. Uh, and we ran this multiple times and I found that each time it felt like the Sony was catching up with her a little slower than the Canon was. So it was stuck on the tree and then came to her yeah. and she got a little further ahead. Yep. But they both did really well. I would give this a slight edge to the Canon. Overall, when we, we shot several takes of these, as it were, and overall it just felt like the Canon was a little more responsive with the autofocus. But 
it's not like the Sony was bad by any means. They were oh, both yeah. performed really but well. We're still we're now starting to talk about you know oh we lost an image. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. when it's one out of ten images that's a little soft, <laughs> yeah. it's you know you're fine. The one thing that the Sony also has a disadvantage in is the buffer. buffering is very slow, but it's very a larger slow. file. It's it moving is. around a file that's 50% larger. So I felt like with the Canon, we would do one of these, and then she could go back, and we could do it again right away. Whereas with the Sony, I would have to wait for probably in 60 seconds. Yeah, so for the buffer. That's, yeah. that's something. So let's do a dynamic range test with the R5 and the R4. Too many R's in this equation. Anyway, we just want to see what the dynamic range is on each of these cameras and how much of the highlight they can hold, how much of the shadow they can hold, and where does the color start to shift. It's a really important test, and you might think, why is it so important? Well, because it shows you if you can be in really heavy light situations, if you can recover the images. It shows you how the camera is going to handle that really kind of pushing the boundaries of the dynamic range and which one's going to help keep the color and keep the highlights and the shadows. So let's take a look at it. Here's our first image. This is properly exposed, so only some minor adjustments here. Tried to open up a little bit of the shadows, bring the highlights within range as much as possible. There are things in the background that are just totally blown out. There's, that's a white mm -hmm. truck out there, which is getting yeah. the broad sun on it, which is no detail, regardless. And I will say, I think I could have opened up the Sony shadows a little yeah, bit more. Looking at it now, uh, that's a minor adjustment in post. And then if we go plus one stop, obviously overexposure is where the digital cameras always struggle. But plus one stop shouldn't be too much of a sweat, and both these cameras are just fine. If we go to plus two stops. Boy, for doing plus, these are both. both look are at the, the Sony well. is holding the background. It, we're getting that posterization on the uh, Canon on the left. Look at all yeah. that white out there. One, her to get, skin, too. Her skin's yeah. going kind of yellow. And then if we go to plus three, both cameras are starting to lose skin tone. We have clipping on her nose. Yeah. Canon's a little worse. Boy, it really is. But Sony's still, I wouldn't, you know overexpose images as much, of course. No. <laughs> if you do this, you're in trouble. <laughs> Underexposure is where digital cameras usually shine because you're preserving the highlight detail a little more, and then you can just lift up the shadows. It's kind of the opposite of the way film used to work. Minus two stops, even, they both look really nice. Really they clean. They really do. You could probably blow these up large even then. Yeah. Moving into minus three stops, this is where most cameras, many cameras, would start to struggle a little bit. And they both look pretty fine to me. Boy, I'm they really do. They're still problems. holding the highlights in, in the background. Uh, Let's look at minus four stops. You are starting to see the Sony is kind of slowing down a little bit. It's getting darker as we try and bring up the details more. If you look under the table, it's starting mm -hmm. to just kind of be lost a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but the color for both of them is holding really well. Minus five stops, I'm definitely seeing some shift in the image. Look at the color checker on the Canon. It really kind of has a magenta or warm Yeah, like a cast. weird cast to it, yeah. Look how the color checker for the Sony is still pretty vivid. It looks pretty good, but if you look at her skin yeah, and stuff, the it's still a little green. Shifting. So I guess minus five is where both these cameras kind of tap out. Well, look at the amount of uh, digital noise in the shadows on the Sony mm -hmm. in comparison, mm -hmm. which su surprised me because it's a larger file uh, should be more information there. I would have expected that more on the Canon than I've seen. Although the Canon's got Canon's it too. usually pretty good at underexposure, but you also have to keep in mind the Canon was a little brighter to begin with, you know. So even at minus four stops, the Canon's it's like you know, a little brighter. like a uh, third of a stop, yeah, right? A third of a stop. In underexposure, it looks like the Canon might have a slight edge. In overexposure, the Sony has a slight edge, so uh, it comes out kind of in the wash. So if an old seasoned photographer were to give you any advice for digital photography, it would be underexposed, my child, underexposed. Okay, we're setting up for the ISO test right now. We have a spider checker chart that we're going to use. A bit of a mixed lighting scenario, but you'll be able to see how the different colors react. The Sony goes up to 32,000 ISO, and the Canon goes up to 51,200. I don't think it really matters which one goes higher, because whoever shoots that high anyways, so here's our, our ISO test. Let's look at 800. We usually start there because there wasn't a lot of light in the room. Plus, most of these uh, cameras are going to look pretty clean up till 800. I mean, it looks beautiful. It I really would shoot does. 800. Both of no them look problem. incredible. Going to 1600. 1600. I would start to expect noise here, uh, but I'm not getting a lot. I mean, you see a little bit of texture in, in the darker parts of her skin, things like that, but it's really not much. 3200 still looks really beautiful. If you blow it up, you do start to see a little bit of texture. A little grittier, I, too. A little more on the Sony. I'm mm -hmm. seeing the grains building a little more on the Sony at, 60, at 3200 than the Canon is. Let's see 6400. 
Yeah, you see it. The Sony's starting to build quicker. At 6400, yeah. you definitely see the Sony's a little more grainy. You see, uh, you start to see some red blocks starting to show up a little bit. To be honest, though, you could shoot, huge you could up. shoot either of these at 6400 and print an 8x10 easily. Oh, yeah, yeah. In you fact, could. I would even say if we go to 12,800, you could probably print this in an 8x10, which is mind blown. I can print that at 12,800. <laughs> print that print. <laughs> So let's look at 25,600. This is the highest the Sony goes, and there's a reason why, because it's yeah. starting to look terrible. The Canon looks <laughs> its the Canon looks consistent. It's definitely noisy now. I don't know that I would ever shoot this high, but the color's consistent and the brightness is consistent, which is saying something. I think I might lean towards the Canon if I were planning to shoot really low light situations that required a high ISO. Yeah. But I would still just hope I'd never have to shoot past 6400. So what's our conclusion here now that we've spent all day oh with these two, two cameras? You know what? I uh, expected there to be a winner here in my mind. I expected hmm. to walk away going, yeah, this is definitely the camera. I feel like they are head and head, head mm -hmm. to head. They really mm -hmm. are. I don't know. What's your sense? Who, who's this camera made for? I mean, looking back at the tests, they both are very good in autofocus. Canon might have a slight very edge. Good. They both have, I think, the same dynamic range. Um, both very good in low light, though yep. Canon, again, might have Maybe a slight edge. Maybe just a little bit. And it, just taking pictures, they both look amazing. So there are a couple categories where Canon has a little bit of an edge. It also shoots a higher frame rate. Um, it has less of a buffer thing going on. It has more autofocus points. So I would actually say, if you have to pick a winner, I think Canon's the winner. I mean, these are the newest, most expensive cameras on the market, and I would say the Canon's probably the best stills camera, uh, full frame stills camera we've ever shot on. I think you're absolutely and right. And the Sony is like 99% there. The fact that it's still competing with Canon's latest offering might say something about Canon. I'm not sure Canon's what. Canon's still trying to get caught up. But I just want to say that for now, this may be the best camera out there. It's an amazing stills camera, a really great tool. But it does bring us back to your question of who are they for? Because there are still people that should probably buy the Sony. If I was an A7S, uh, if I was an A7 III owner and I wanted to step my camera up and I had lenses, there's not enough compelling evidence here to make you to switch, switch over to, to Canon. I or mean, vice versa. You yeah. know, there just isn't. Uh, if you're an EOS R owner and you're thinking about stepping up and you're thinking, you know what, I don't have any RF glass, then you might want to decide which which glass do you want to invest in. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to have to buy all new RF glass, then you have to decide which of these platforms. And that brings on a whole other conversation and, about glass. So The glass is, is a big deal because there isn't a lot of RF glass. Nope. It's all very expensive. And there aren't third-party options right now. No, Whereas and they're Sony big. has a ton of third-party options. Yeah, yeah. Sony so. has got Tamron, they got Sigma, they got great options out there. If you're a landscape photographer and you're really into as much information as possible, I think the Sony might be a great uh, yeah. decision for you because you're going to get these beautiful large plates. You're going to make you can stitch them together to even make them larger. You can and do the high 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 resolution high photo, resolution photos. I mean, shifting. there's a lot of information yeah. there that really, as we've done uh, format comparisons really makes this camera dang close to a medium format. Yeah, it yeah. really is the closest thing out there to the quality and the detail and the resolution of a, media, of a medium format. If you shoot video as well, if you're doing photo and video, I think the Sony is a clear winner. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the video features before versus some other video cameras, and the Canon just totally blew it. Yeah. It blew it with the video. I think that the Sony would be a better investment for that kind of stuff. All right, so there you have it. There's a look at these two cameras, head-to-head, -head, two great cameras that really are the two heavy hitters in the market right now. Pretty excited about the thought of Nikon getting into this with the next offering that they're bringing they up. They just announced the Z7 Mark II. It should jump right into this yeah. category right here and compete extremely well. Love Nikon, great looking picture. There's a company that really focuses on still photography mm -hmm. cameras and they're not trying to knock everyone out of the arena in the video market. So, yeah. all right, uh, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Make sure you subscribe to the Slant Lens. Click that bell, ring that bell, so we will give you a notification when we got new lessons. And we appreciate your support here, so keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.